Hi, so this week I'm going to mod a Nintendo Switch Lite as quickly as possible. We're going to miss out all the stuff that's not required, we're just going to get down to the basics. So we've got a fully working Nintendo Switch here, so we'll just turn it off. We need to remove all the screws out of the back, use our iFixit kit for that. So try wings on the back and then we'll get a lipper and you just run it along the side. So run along the top, run it along the sides, just gently prise a white. You don't want to be doing it too hard, you don't want to break any plastic. And as you get your, your lipper around, they'll start to separate and you can peel the back off. Still be careful when you pull it apart though, as you don't want to damage any of the internals. Then there's four screws on the back, we just need to remove this heat shield. Just peel that away. And then we just disconnect this connector and the battery, and then we can work on it. A couple of screws to remove this heat pipe. Take that off. And then we just need to remove this heat shield. So we go underneath the microscope, just get a pin in these side bits here. And then just pop up the side and then you can peel off the heat shield. Then just get a cotton bud and carefully remove all of the old thermal paste. So I tend to wipe it away with just a dry bud to start with, then apply a little bit of isopropyl to clear it. And then just get between all the little resistors along the bottom to clear it thoroughly. Now we'll prep our ribbon cables, so we'll just come in with a little bit of flux and then a decent sized tip and apply some solder. Same with the other ribbon cable, just apply the flux to the parts that need it and then come in with the solder and then tin them bits, flip it over and then there's three connections in the corner, so just apply a little bit of solder onto them. And then give it a good clean of isopropyl, ready to go back into the housing. So we just line up this one first. So just make sure you get the ground pads underneath the shield. And then line it up to make sure that it's all perfectly positioned. Then come with your solder and iron. Make sure you add plenty of flux. As you can see, I've got a bit of a join there, so it doesn't matter. Come with some flux. Come with me solder and iron and then we can remove the joint and make sure we get some good connections. Same on the other side, plenty of flux, plenty of solder, that way it's a lot easier to solder to. If it joins like that, you just come in with some more flux and then get your solder and iron and it will remove the excess. Just hold it for a couple of seconds and then move away, give it a good clean. As you can see, this bit didn't go underneath. All you need to do is just push it down if that happens and then just apply a little bit of solder and flux onto these ground pads just to secure it. Give it another good clean and then that bit's done. Just need to apply a little bit of Kapton tape over it. This will stop any potential shorts when we put the heat shield back on later. Now these are the pads that we need to solder to. They are very small. So I'm just going to come in with some flux and I've changed my solder and iron tip to a small one now and I'm just going to solder to these four pins and then to these top two as well. It's very easy to solder to the wrong ones here so just be very careful. You don't want to be spreading solder all across pads you don't want to solder to. Give it another good clean, we just need to keep cleaning as we go along. And then we've got this one here that needs a little dab and then give that a little wipe. So we just need to line up the ribbon cable as best as we can. Try and get in the best position as we can. I find that doing this B section first is normally the easiest one. So just come in with me solder and iron, a bit of flux, a bit of solder, get it lined up. Then we'll go on to these ones too. So add a little bit of flux. And then come in with your solder and iron. I do find the smallest tip really helps with these ones. Larger tips are too hard to get under control. Make sure that you solder the two points to each of the solder pads on the ribbon cable, otherwise it will not work. So they seem good, we'll just give them a little clean of isopropyl. And then this game cart needs to come out. And then we just need to fold over the ribbon cable and then we've got three points that we need to solder to. So there's a cap on the top and then these two pads. So flux again, come in with some solder as you do, give it another clean. 
then we'll fold over the ribbon cable and then we'll do the big pads first so we just come in position it make sure it's all lined up so that one there and then we'll do the top one with a little bit of flux and then a little bit of flux on this cap here and then we just need to solder that and then that's pretty much all we need to do another good clean again final bit we will do is a ground pad so the ground pad on the ribbon cable this does need connecting so you can just do one or two i'm going to throw in the two as we're doing a thorough job and we keep cleaning as we go along to get rid of all the old flux as you can see they all look good they all look solid and hopefully we'll have a fully working machine so you just need to bend this ribbon cable over a little bit put it into an s shape and then we can connect the mod chip. So I'll make the top connection first, then the bottom connection, pop them in. We're going to give it a quick test. So battery and ribbon cable. Press the power button. We're getting a flashing light, which is always a good sign. Flip it over, no SD card. And we know it's working. So we'll just disconnect the battery while we're putting it all back together. We just need to do a little bit of a trim on this heat shield. So the top corner just needs cutting out just so the ribbon cable can fit in properly. We'll apply some new thermal paste. Then we'll come in with the heat shield, pop it all back in. I've got some double sided tape to put on the back of the mod chip so that it doesn't move. Line that up and push it in. And then we just need to put in a screw where the speaker is. We can reattach the game cart. Just reposition the bit of mod chip that goes underneath. Put all the screws back in there. We just want to put a little bit of capped on tape over the top just to stop any potential shorts. Some fresh thermal paste on the heat pipe. Pop that into position. Three screws back in. And now we're nearly ready to reassemble. So the battery and ribbon cable are connected. The rear heat shield goes back on. The four screws on. Then we pop the rear cover back on. I find putting the top bit on first and then clicking it around the edges is the best way to do it. All the screws back in. Press the power button again, making sure that it comes on. Just takes a little couple of seconds sometimes. And there we can see no SD card. If we want to boot it normally, just press the volume up and down buttons together. Press the power button and it will boot up as normal. So there we have a fully modded Nintendo Switch Lite done within 8 minutes. Just remember, take your time. There's no rush. You don't want to make any mistakes. It's the second hardest mod chip to do after the OLED. But it's worthwhile in the end. So a little bonus at the end. I'm just going to show you what you do if your chip doesn't have custom firmware on it or if you want to change the custom firmware. This also works for all the other RP2040 mod chips as well. So you just need to connect the USB-C connector and then if we plug it in and it starts flashing like this, this means software is installed and nothing opens on your computer. So we just need to disconnect the USB-C port, hold down the boot button plug it into the computer again and then you'll hear it connecting to your PC then when you have a little look on the screen you will see a folder appears so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply something called the nuke which will delete all the contents so all you need to do is get the nuke file drag it across into the folder the folder will go off for a second and then it will boot back up so this means that the custom firmware has been deleted from the mod chip so whenever you plug it in now it will show and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a new custom firmware across and just drop it into that folder and then it will disappear and then when you re-plug in this mod chip into your computer it will not show again so if it doesn't show when you plug it in it means it's got custom firmware if it does show when you plug it in it means it doesn't have custom firmware so nice and easy a little bonus at the end of the video any questions please leave them in the comments thanks very much for watching please like comment and subscribe